Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to Aussie Fish Keeping. So in today's video, we're going to be talking all about the common toadfish. So this fish is a little bit harder to find and it's a little bit more of a rare fish here in Australia and in the aquarium hobby in general. But nonetheless, it's a really unique and personable fish that you can get for your aquarium. So in today's video, I'm just going to be going over the general care and requirements that these guys need as well as some of the equipment that you'll have to have if you want to keep these guys. So at the moment, I actually have a group of five of these guys and I really want to try and breed them, but we'll get into that in another video. So what I keep mine in is this 55 litre tub and all I have in it is a sponge filter, a really deep layer of sand, as well as some dead broken up bits of coral. And finally, I have a couple of these plants in here that I got from an area near me. I don't know if they'll grow too well, but I just put them in here anyway. I will just say that this tub is definitely not big enough for all five of them. And this is probably only suitable for one or two. But I just have them in here for the moment while I try and sex them. And then I can split them off into breeding pairs. So the first thing we're going to run over with these guys is water parameters. Now this is probably the most important aspect to keeping these guys because they can be a little bit finicky with water parameters. Although with saying that they are also quite a hardy fish and they won't mind very little changes but you just want to get them right for the most part. So an essential piece of equipment that you're going to need for these guys is a saltwater refractometer. So if you don't know what this is it pretty much just measures how much salt there is in your water and yeah it can just tell you how much you need per litre. So I found for these guys anywhere from 25 to 35 parts per million in the salinity is probably where you want it. But in saying that you can transition these guys over to brackish water if you want to. It does just take a little bit of time. So as for temperature, these guys can live in an unheated environment. And as long as it go doesn't go above 22 degrees, they should be alright. And it doesn't go below 18 degrees. Because once it goes below 18, you do run the risk of causing white spot on your fish ph for these guys is also really simple anything from 6.5 to 8 should be perfectly fine and they don't really worry about these sorts of water parameters as much as salinity so those are all pretty much the basic water parameters you need to know before getting these guys and one thing i will mention is that you are going to want to keep your water topped up around once a week i would top it up just because if the water does get too low the salt concentration in the water will increase just because of the evaporation of the fresh water. So when the fresh water evaporates, it leaves behind the salt that was in that water and that will just highly concentrate the leftover water. So that's why you're going to want to top it up just to make sure the concentration of salt in the water does not get too high. So diet for these guys is another really important thing. Now, I would recommend frozen brine shrimp as a staple in their diet, but live shrimp is also another good one, and aquarium snails. Now, I find these guys don't really like the whole snails, but if you crush them up, they will absolutely go ham on them and destroy them. And adding in live shrimp and snails is also really good enrichment for them, but as a staple, I would just say frozen Artemia brine shrimp. And you can see how much they actually do love the brine shrimp. I didn't even throw it out. I just chuck it in there in the frozen cubes. And I generally feed them two to three a day. And they just absolutely love it. So as you can see, these guys are very messy eaters. And they just spread brine shrimp everywhere. Which is okay. Because they will go around and pick it up after. But I also have these small blennies or gobies in the bottom of my tank and they do not disturb them whatsoever and i think they're actually really important to put in your aquarium with your toadfish because they will just eat up all the food that your toadfish doesn't and as you can see the toadfish do not touch them whatsoever and they're completely safe in this aquarium so the final thing you are going to need to know about these guys is that they do require a lot of oxygen so I have this four valve air pump. I will actually leave the link in the description. I got it off eBay and actually a really good pump. But nonetheless, I keep it on all night and it just supplies oxygen into the water. 
So, because these guys are from tidal waters, they are used to really highly oxygenated water. So, that's why it's vital for these guys to have an air pump or sponge filter. So, with that being said, I hope you all enjoyed the video and I hope you enjoy your new toadfish. They are a really cool species and they're really personal and quite a funny fish. And I think they are absolutely an awesome fish for any beginner to medium level keeper. But with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video.